In part A of this problem, first we want to know if the two terms that are given are traveling waves. And to determine that, we can check the argument. We have 1000 pi t plus 0.75 pi d as the argument. And we can see that the form of this is the same as the solutions we came up with for the wave equation. It has a time component and also a space component. So this does constitute a traveling wave. And we can also determine the direction based on the sign here. And we can say as time goes up, does d have to increase or decrease in order to get a constant argument? Say we're tracking the peak of the wave. We want to know which direction the peak goes. So as time goes up, then d in order to get a constant argument, d must go down. And since d equals zero is at the load, then as d decreases, we're going towards the load. So this represents a wave going towards the load. Conversely, when we have the argument 1000 pi t minus 0.75 pi d, this is a traveling wave. We can see it has the same form. The only difference is that there's a minus sign here. And we can say as time goes up, in order to get a constant, a constant argument here, d must also go up, which means we're moving in the opposite direction towards the generator. Next, we can find the corresponding phasor. And in order to do that, we can use Euler's identity. Using Euler's identity, we get 8 e to the j 0.75 pi d times e to the j 1000 pi t and the other term as well, e to the minus j 0.75 pi d e to the j 1000 pi t. So following those three steps that you had in your handout, now the next step is to get rid of the e to the j omega term. Now notice we already did step one. Step one was to make sure everything's written in terms of cosines, and that's already done for us. So step, step two was to write it using Euler's identity, and now factoring out the e to the j omega term. We're going to take those out in the phasor domain, is the third step. So that means our current phasor, we write our current with a tilde over it, and it's also only a function of d, we don't have time anymore, is eight e to the j 0.75 pi d plus 6 e to the minus j 0.75 pi d. And the last question is at what frequency is this phasor valid? So in order to answer that, we can go to the our e to the j omega t term. Since we're factoring this out, we need to know what the expression we have here is only valid at the frequency for the term we factored out. So this is equal to omega. So then we have f is omega over 2 pi, and omega is um, 1000 pi over 2 pi. So I'm, I have written here 15.9 kilohertz. I have to double check that, um, and then in the next video I'll tell you if that's correct or not.